Welcome to the Bible Christian to God Bible Ministry and I want to say happy Sabbath in addition to the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob born again of the Word of God. Those of you that are born of the Word, those of you that are disciples of the Lord, and those seeking to be a part of God's family in spirit and in truth. And today's lesson is entitled, The Disciples of Christ, The Disciples of the Word of God. Again, it's entitled, Disciples of Christ, The Disciples of the Word of God. Now, I'm going to go, I got because I got a lot to put out in this lesson. We're going to understand first the word disciple. Because we, we, we seek to get an understanding around here, y'all. The book says wisdom is a principal thing, but with all you're getting, getting an understanding. So the word disciple, first of all, it means, it's a noun, it means one of the twelve personal followers of Christ, which became known as the apostles. So you got to start out as a disciple, as a follower of Christ. Then it goes into the book, which we, we're going to talk about the apostleship of the apostles, which is listed in Acts 1 and 25 and Galatians 2 and 8. They all started out as disciples. Uh, another definition of disciple is one of the seven followers sent forth by Christ. And that's Luke 10 chapter and verse 1. Another definition is any professed follower of Christ in his lifetime. Next definition is any follower of Christ. Okay, so as you can see, escalates. Any follower of Christ. Now, uh, a person, next definition, a person who is a pupil or an adherent of the doctrines of another. In other words, you don't have to just be a disciple. There are more than just disciples of Christ out here, y'all. You got brothers that are disciples of other brothers. That's why you got so much division on the Sabbath day against the body of Christ. So you got brothers that are disciples of the doctrines of another man. That's how you get your false prophets. That's how you get your cliques. That's the reason why you don't have the unity of everybody coming together. Even though we all believe in the book, why can't we come together? Because you got men that are disciples of other men. They refuse to believe what thus said the Lord. Therefore, they fall under the uh, definition of an adherent of the doctrine of another. As in the follower or disciple of brother so-and-so. Or this brother or that brother. Those are disciples. We got disciples like that too, y'all. Okay? So now, what I want to do is get into synonyms. Now, the synonyms that's biblically applicable, uh, the word that means the same as disciple is a devotee. You can be devoted to the word of God. And you got brothers that devoted to what some man said that professed to be of the word of God. There's a difference, y'all. Even Paul said, follow me as I am a follower of Christ. He didn't say just follow me. Because he don't want you to be a disciple of Paul, but a disciple of Christ. You also have the word convert means disciple. The word witness means disciple. You know, you have a sect that says they are Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay? So that's a, another word for being a disciple. Now what's an antonym for disciple? A detractor. Titus 1, 16 tells you you got people running around professing that they know God, but they deny him being reprobate to every good work that the Lord would have you to do or learn from his word. You have what's called the enemy. Also, that's another opposite of a disciple. Or lastly, opponent. Okay, so now let's go to the Word of God and let's go into St. John 8 and 31. We're going to be in here a little bit. We're going to be in here a little bit. Make sure you put your marker in here. We're going to go to St. John 8 and verse 31. Because here is the premise for being a disciple. I used to be a disciple of a man at one time. To I did what the book said we're going to do right here and continue in God's Word. We here at the Bible Christmas of God, I'm not trying to make anybody a disciple of Brother Jacob. Child please.
You need to be a disciple of the Word of God, the disciples of Christ. And anyone that I've ever baptized, I'll always baptize them to the Word of God. Because that's who you got to be a disciple of. So right here, St. John 8 and 30. We're going to start at St. John 8 and 30. Now let's pay real close attention to this. And he spake these words, many bleed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which bleed on him, because every Jew didn't believe on the Lord. The Pharisees were the enemy of Christ. They sought to destroy him, but they were the most religious power, you know, religious of all the Jews. They were his enemies. That's why he said, Jesus spoke to those Jews which bleed on him. See, that's the qualification. Because you got some Jews don't even believe on Jesus. So this ain't even for them. The ones that do believe on Jesus, you listen to this very uh, uh, passage. If you continue in my word, see that's the key. We're going to break this down. Though. If you continue in my word, not just get it. Because you get some brothers that get the book, oh I see it, I got it, and they done. Then they're going to badge the Christian. That's all they can talk about is what the Christians do. The son of Christian, just the son of Christian. No. The book said, if you continue in my does it continue? This is a journey. This is the premise that I teach with the Bible Christian God. We're on a journey, brothers and sisters. I met a young brother at the store yesterday who's young in a journey. I'm not going to condemn that brother because he's behind me. Or on the, you know, in, in any capacity, he hasn't been in the journey that long, or he has continued as long as I have. I'm going to love the brother. I can tell he's been, he's behind, he's in years, you know, he's a young in the word, he's a babe, he's a little child in the word of God. But what's going to grow him up is what we just read. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciple. You see the qualifications? You have to be a continuum in the word of God. Not just get it and run around bashing people with it. Have to be about continuing in it. Then are you my disciples indeed. Now let's break this down right quick. By going to 1 Peter 23. Sorry, 1 and 23. Because when you continue in his word, this is what happens to you. And all the disciples of the Lord know this. All the disciples of Christ know this. 1 Peter 1 and 23. Notice what it says. Being born again, not a corruptible seed, because you already came out to mother your father. That's why we age. Because we were born a corruptible seed. That's the first time. So watch what this born again is talking about. But of incorruptible by the word of God. When that happens, y'all. Now. You ain't waiting to get the word of God later, y'all. You need it now. Which liveth and abideth forever. Now watch how this takes us back to the word of the Lord. Verse 24. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord, notice what it said. We just came out for St. John 8 and 32. If you continue in my word, don't be a disciple of what man thinks. Be a disciple of the word of God and be born again by the word of the Lord, the word of God. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. This is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Because the intent we're going to understand of the disciple of the Lord is to teach the people. That we may continue in his word. Continue. Now let's go look at this word up close, y'all. And, uh, oh no, go back. I'm sorry. Go back. Go back to St. John 8. I'm going to read it for myself because I got I to gotta remember what I got on the paper. Verse 32 tells us, when you continue in his word and you are born again by his word, now you are his disciples indeed. 
And notice when you are his disciples and you are born again by the word of God, verse 32, ye shall know the truth. Amen. Truth. You should know the truth. You're not going to run around talking about anybody born again now. You're not going to be running around calling them, talking about, we're waiting on the kingdom. You're not going to be running around with all this fleshy disciple of the man junk. You're going to be a disciple of Christ because you're preaching the word of the Lord. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make ye what? Free. That's what you need to be. When? Now. Now let's go to Romans 6 and 17. Romans 6 and verse 17. Because when you're free, you are a disciple of the Lord. You are born again by the word of God. Now you are his disciple. You're no longer a disciple of me. And when that happens, verse 17, Romans 6 and 17, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. See, you were the servants of sin because you, you didn't have no truth in you. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, verse 18, being then made free from sin. That's why you have to be born again now here because your mind, you were in your mind servants of sin. But by the word of God, you come under the word you have been made free from sin. You became a servant of righteousness. What is righteousness, y'all? Let's go to hold this spot. Rather, let's go to Psalms 119. Psalms 119 and 172. Psalms 119 and verse 72. Psalms 119 and 172. Let's look at what this righteousness is. Psalms 119 and verse 72. It says, it is written, y'all. My tongue shall speak of thy word. Then the Lord says, you continue in my what? My word. My word. So my tongue shall speak of thy word. Notice, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Now you are born again to show righteousness and your tongue speak of his word. What were you speaking of before you got born again by the word of God? So once you have continued in his word, you become his disciples, your tongue speak of his word and all his commandments are righteousness, y'all. This is righteousness. So now let's go to St. John 6 and 63. Because this is important to the life of a disciple of Christ. The disciple of Jesus. Because his words is this. St. John 6 and 63. St. John 6 and 63. Look what Christ said. Sixty-three. It is the spirit that quickeneth; the flesh profiteth nothing. The words, notice he said, the words that I speak unto you, because that's what you're born again by now. And you can tell who ain't born of that word, or you can tell who's not a disciple of Christ or the Lord. You can tell. But the words that Christ speak unto you, he said, they are spirit and they are life. That's what you want. When you want this, this is the spirit you're born of. You're born of the word of God. It is spirit. That's what John is talking about in the third chapter of St. John. It's twofold, y'all. There's a physical side and there's a spiritual side. You got to get that spirit part now. Your mind got to be full of the word of God or his spirit now. So now let's go to Romans 8 and 5. Romans 8 chapter verse 5. Romans 8 chapter and verse 5, y'all. 
Romans 8 and verse 5. Because it's so critical to understanding how to be a disciple of the Lord. You don't want to be a disciple of a brother so-and-so. No, you want to be a disciple of Christ. Born again by his word. A disciple and knowing the truth. And it make you free from serving sin. You say you won't go commit sin. You said you are no longer a servant of sin. But Romans 8 and verse 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, which means they that are after the word, the things of the word of God. That's how you become his disciple. Now it says, verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see the transition, y'all? You see the born again effect that has to happen now? Because before you become a disciple of Christ, you was carnal minded. For the word of God hit you, and before you was continuing therein, you was carnal minded. But you make that transition from a carnal mind to being spiritually minded, which is life and peace. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That's why there is not one disciple that believes you should go to church on the first day of the week. Not one disciple of the Lord. Not a one. And we're going to show you that. Ain't nobody that's in church tomorrow a disciple of the Lord. Because we're going to show you, being a disciple of the Lord, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day. So if we're not following his word, then whose word are they following tomorrow? Disciples of men. Our Father Lord said, in vain do they worship me, teaching for commandments, the doctrines of who? Men, and they are not subject to the law of God. You think I'm kidding? Pick, pick a spot tomorrow. Pick one. And which one of them ain't destroying the law? Which one? Not one of them sitting up there promoting the law. Why? Because it's all carnal minded in there, y'all. Now, verse uh, 7. Because the carnal mind is started. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit or in his word. Being born again by that word puts you in the spirit of God or puts you in the word of God now, right here. So then they that are in the flesh, that's, verse, that's what verse 8 said. Verse 9 says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit or in the spirit of Christ or in his word. Or you are a disciple. You are spiritually minded now. Notice. Verse uh, 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God or the word of God dwell in you. See, this is that word that you're born of that's in you, that takes you out of that carnal mind. You don't went from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. You were born of a carnal mind. Now you're born of a spiritual mind of the word of God. So, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now watch this. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ or what? The Word of Christ. How can you be his disciple? How could you? That's how I know every last one of them on the first day and a disciple of Christ in there. There's another Christ there, a disciple, but not of the Word of God. Notice what it says. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That's why it's so critical to be born again now of the word of God. That you may belong to him. Because without it, you ain't none of his. Even on the side of that, you got men that are against being born again by the word of God now. But they got disciples following them. A lot of disciples of them. But who is that of Christ? Who is this that has the spirit? The one that's of uh, that. But the ones that don't. Mm-mm. There are none of his. So now let's go to St. John 8, back to St. John 8 chapter. I 
I said, like I said, keep your mark in St. John 8. And we're going to show you what happens when you're not born of the word of God. You're not continuing in the word of God. You're not his disciples. You can't hear his word. But we're going to go to St. John 8. And this time, we're going to go all the way down to uh, 8 and 33. Because he was telling this to the Jews, and these are the Jews that didn't believe in him, y'all. Look what their response was to what Jesus said. Verse 38, 33. They answered him, we be Abraham. He said, that's carnal Israel. That's carnal mind. Carnal mind. We be the seed, Abraham seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How says thou, ye shall be made free? And got a clue. Not accepting the words that they need to continue in. But here's the thing. We're going to keep reading. Let the book talk. And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. That's why Jesus came to make us free from being servants of sin. But notice, and the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided forever. If the son therefore shall make ye free, ye shall be free indeed. Then watch this, Jesus hit them straight where they at. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. See, he know Israel is going to boast on Israel. Yeah, I know you the seed of Abraham. I know you Israel. But ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Now, we're going to find out that the disciples' biggest enemies was the seed of Abraham. All of this before 70 AD, y'all, the disciples of Christ, major problem was the seed of Abraham. It wasn't the Gentiles, y'all. The Gentiles were like, wow, what the, what the Lord said. Whereas Israel was against what the Lord said. Here's where it's rooted at. Here's where it's rooted at, y'all. I speak that which I've seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. Oh, wait a minute. So they born to somebody else, even though they physically the seed of Abraham? They're the disciples of somebody else instead of the disciples of Christ? Notice what it says, verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. And I know Israel was standing in, these Pharisees were standing there with their fringes on. And remember, Abraham didn't have no fringes. The fringes wasn't mentioned until Numbers, the 15th chapter. And he's, Abraham kept the commandments of God. But they wanted to kill Jesus. Look at verse 40. But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Now watch this. Jesus is going to clean in on y'all. You do the deeds of your father. See, that's why when you're born again of the word of God now, you understand whose father is in heaven and who's running around who's uh, uh, disciples of men on earth, y'all. That's why he said, ye are of your father the devil. Our father, which are in heaven, hallowed be his name. Okay? That's why that, I call that the family prayer. Only the born again understand the significance of that. But Jesus is breaking down these Pharisees and explaining to them, you do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Now look, look, look. Let's slow it down. Notice the religious approach of these men. And they're attacking the Lord. They're saying, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. But when you're born of the word of God, when you've been born again by his word, and you preach the word of the Lord, you clearly see who are the disciples of Christ and who's the disciples of men. Because watch what Jesus goes in and says. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. Because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And his commandments is found in his word and that is what you are born again being born again by. Now, you get that now. But he said unto them, if 
God was your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Now watch this, y'all. Here go the distinction right here, verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech? Why? Even because you cannot hear my word? Because they have been religious, so religious, so long of men. And Paul going to tell you, we're going to read that. Because Paul got saved. Paul got born again. Paul made the transition between the ears. That's what we're talking about. He had a renewing of his mind to understand the word. But these men, he said, even because you cannot understand, not hear my word. No, he said, ye are of your father the devil. Now, wait a minute. They're standing there physically to see the Abraham. But along the way, they had become born of the devil. That's why he said, you are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father will ye do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Remember, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you should know the truth. It's a continuation, y'all. But Satan and his children, that Jesus is identifying here and now, he said, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convincing me of sin? And if I tell, say the truth, why do not ye believe me? So we got two different children here. A child of God and a child of the devil. That's what Jesus said, ain't he? We read that, didn't we? Notice. He that is of God... Hear it, God's word. Because that's what you going You gotta be born again by now. Think about it. You want to hear God's word later? No, you do not want to hear it later. Because if you hear it later, it's gonna be at judgment day. Mm. Straight up. And we open up the books. That's a that's the wrong time to hear the word of God. You want to hear it now? You want to be born of it now? You want to hear it? Because it says, He that is of God, hear it, God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not. Of God. That's why being born again is so important and it makes you a disciple of the Lord. Now let's continue on and let's go to uh I'm gonna go skip down to verse 56. Because they so had a problem with Jesus. And they kept bringing up, we be the seed of Abraham. But watch what uh Jesus hit it with. Skip down to verse 56. He said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. But watch what the response was. Then said the verse 57. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. Hast thou seen Abraham? But watch what Jesus hit him with, y'all. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus had been around way before he manifested in the flesh. Even in the days of Abraham. So now, let's do ourselves a favor. And let's look at why he said my day. Let's go to Matthew 12 and 8. Because this is what the disciples of the Lord deal with. Matthew 12 chapter and verse 8. Why did he tell them, look, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Oh, Jesus got a day? Even before he went in the ground, he had a day, y'all. That's why he said it right here, Matthew 12 and verse 8. Matthew 12 and verse 8. Matthew 12 and verse 8. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. That is written, my brothers and sisters. All the disciples of the Lord deal with the Sabbath day, which is today. And they deal with his word. But the ones that kick against the Lord, they are of the devil. Or they are not disciples of the Lord. I'll go there. They're not disciples of the Lord. 
But the Lord said, Son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And we can actually go in Hebrews. It says what the Lord said. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. So the Sabbath day never changed. Jesus rose on the Sabbath day. He rose on the day that he's Lord of. That's how we know, without a doubt, unequivocally, ain't nobody that's on church on Sunday a disciple of the Lord. And when they get hit with the word, if they believe the word of the Lord, they come out of Sunday. You come out of it. You do not stay there when you get hit with the word of the Lord. You get it. You get it clean out of the Bible. That Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day and you leave the first day of the week to become a disciple of Christ. Because he's the Lord of the Sabbath day, y'all. So now let's do a separate favor and let's go to Isaiah 8 and 16. Isaiah 8 and 16. I said 8 and 16. Look what it says. Here. Unmuted. It says, bind up the testimony. Seal the law amongst my disciples. That's what constitutes continuing in God's word. You have his testimony and you have his law and the book said in the book of Isaiah 8 16 bind up the testimony seal the law amongst my disciples this is a disciple of the Lord a disciple of the Lord don't just hang out la 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 like the Pharisees Pharisees just la 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 no testimony that's why polygamy you strict you cannot be a disciple of the Lord and you polygamy Cannot be. You strictly run. That's why I saw all of the, uh, all the uh, Pharisees store. Oh man, what about Deuteronomy? This? What about no? I said, brother, bring me the testimony. But the disciples of the Lord stood up in the testimony. Trust me. Why? Because he says, bind up the testimony and seal the law amongst my disciples. Now, what does the law do for us, y'all? Let's go to Psalms. Uh, sorry, let's go and show you how this is Jesus right here by going to Psalms 132 verse 11. Psalms 132 and verse 11. 132 and verse 11. Psalms 132 and verse 11. Watch this, y'all. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. See, the Lord is the God of truth, y'all. Not iniquity. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony, then I shall teach them. See, Jesus was teaching his disciples. Amen. And then his disciples wanted to go and teach others how to follow Christ. Not how to follow them. So he said, I will, if thy uh, children will keep my covenant and my testimony, then I shall teach them their children. This is those that are born again. That's why the book said little children. Their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. The child of the law and the testimony. For the Lord had chosen Zion. He has desired it for its habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. Because this is what the disciples of Christ teach and know. Amen. He desires to dwell on this earth in Zion. The disciples of Christ are talking about going over yonder. When the Lord get here, not up yonder. Big difference, y'all. Big difference. So now let's go to Revelations uh uh, 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 one, Revelation 1 and 9. Revelation 1, chapter 1, and verse 9. Our conference call room is unmuted.
I'll come to our rooms. I'm muted. Revelations 1 and 9. Because John was a disciple of the Lord. And look what it look what it said. I, John, who also am your brother and companion tribulation, in the kingdom, he in it, y'all. Mm. And patience of Jesus Christ was in the aisle that is called Patmos for the word of God and his key for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes. Did he say bind up the testimony and seal the law amongst my disciples? This is Jesus Christ. Mm. Jesus, the law and the testimony. Let's go back to Isaiah 8 chapter, but go to verse 20. Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah 8 and 20 this time. And when you are a disciple of the Lord, this is how you talk. This is how the disciples of Christ speak, y'all. Isaiah 8 and 20. You break off a whole lot of doctrine. When you speak to the law and the testimony, I'm going to put it like that. You get a lot of understanding when you do what the Lord said as his disciples. Law and the testimony. I've seen so many brothers that say, I can't see that, brother. I can't. But, brother, let's get some testimony in you, bro. Why tell them to go to the testimony, too? Why do I? The premise is to teach from the law and the testimony. This is why. It's how his disciples speak. When we continue in his word, and we should know the truth, and the truth should make us free. Notice. To the law, this verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. And the book tells you, Jesus is the light of the world. Oh, yeah. So, consider this. This is who the disciples of Christ. We speak to the law and the testimony. That's why that thing went down with polygamy. I was waiting on the brothers. Come on, man. You got to bring me polygamy out the New Testament, bro. We can run all day long, 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 long. Anybody want to talk about the 30 day per month? Got to go law and testimony. We go right there, Revelations, the 11th chapter. 1,260 days divided by 42 months. Give us 30 days all day long. That's the testimony. There's a couple of other pieces in there. That you just can't go law, 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 law. That's what's wrong with the what they call Christians. They stay testimony, testimony, testimony. They kill the law. So when you stay on one side, there's no light in you. They got a Jesus in there on Sunday, but it ain't the one that's the lawgiver. So therefore, they're taking his name in vain. They're not his disciples because they are without the law. They don't speak to the law. And the testimony ain't no light in you. Okay? Which side of the table you are. Whether you're a Sabbath day keeper or a Sunday keeper. You must do what we just read for there to be light. That's what a disciple of Christ does. A disciple of the word of God. A disciple of the word of God. Now let's go to Matthews. I'm sorry, to Acts 9 and 16. 9 and 1. Because you had enemies other disciples. And then we're going to look at what his disciples know. What the book, the Lord showed his disciples because they speak to the law. Because they speak to the testimony. He gives them light. That's why you got people that say, man, that Old Testament done away with. Man, it ain't no good. Man, that put you in bondage. They speak in darkness. You got brothers running law, 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 man. That, that New Testament, uh, some guy said that's a, 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 a Trojan horse. Ain't no light in there, bro. Straight up. Because the book said that. I didn't say that. The book said ain't no light in them. So Acts 9 and 1. Watch what Paul was in. Acts 9 and 1. This is what Paul was before he got knocked down. And saw before he became known as Paul. Yet breathing not threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
went unto the high priest. See, you had the chief priests and the high priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees. All of them was against the body of Christ or the church of God or the disciples of the Lord or the Christians. All of that fall under the disciples of the Lord. It just comes in increments. Because we're going to show you they were first disciples. They got later on called Christians, y'all. That came later on. But notice what Paul did. Verse 2. Desire of him led us to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if, if he found any of this way, what way? The Lord's disciples' way. Disciples of the Lord's way, rather, I should say. Whether they be men or women, because whether you are man or woman, you can be a disciple of the Lord. Amen. That's right. It's not gender bias. So you can be a disciple of the Lord. So he said, if you found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around by him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now wait a minute now. You mean to tell me the disciples represent the body of Christ? Even though the Lord not physically here for you to lay a hand or a finger to talk against the body of Christ or the disciples of the Lord, you are persecuting the Lord? And we got major persecution. Because you got men wanting to be disciples of them rather than disciples of the word. Because watch what verse 5 says. And the Lord said, who are, and he said rather, Paul, and he said, who art thou, Lord? Notice, now this is a man that was under the chief priest. Okay. And Paul would tell you, he was a chief Pharisee. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Felt he was blameless in the law. But he turned around and said to the Lord, who art thou? Wow. And the Lord said, I am Jesus. See, he didn't know Jesus. Mm. And you got some of these same Pharisees running around, law, 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 don't know Jesus. Same mindset. They are not disciples of Christ. So here we see Paul finna get his conversion, y'all. He finna be born again. Straight up. He said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now, obviously the Lord knew his heart, because Paul was very genuine in his persecution. And when the Lord flipped him, he was very genuine in expressing the gospel of Christ. Now watch what he does though. Verse 6. And he trembled and astonished, saying, Lord, what would thou have me to do? Right there. Because he was trembling. He humbled himself. What, Lord, what would, I, what would you have me to do? And he, the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Okay? So, uh, I'm going to go move on though to <clears throat> the mysteries that the apostles or disciples of God know. Let's go to Matthew 13 chapter. Because the relationship between the disciples of Christ that God has with his disciples that Christ has with his disciples is very precious. And you don't want no man to bring you out of that. Amen. Very precious in the sight of God. And then right here in Matthew, the 13th chapter, and verse 10. Because this chapter uh, has a lot of parables in it. From verse uh, 3 all the way down to verse 9. The parable of the sowing of the seed. But his disciples asked him a question. Why, you know, a special question here, y'all. We're going to examine this, this relationship between Christ and his disciples. And verse 10, Matthew 13 and 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Mm. And he answered and said unto them, It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom wow. of heaven, Amen. but to them it is not given. See, this is what happens when you are born of the word of God. Now, he reveals his mission when you become his disciples. And things that's given to you, the Lord ain't gave 
to all of the religions. Even so much, let's get down in the same chapter. I'm going to go all the way down. Go all the way down to verse... Uh, Cause he sent the he sent the he sent the multitude away. And we're gonna skip down to verse. Uh, we'll go all the way down the same thirteen chapter, and verse. Uh, Shall I make sure I go down? Thirty six. Watch this. He sent the multitude away, y'all. The Lord gets very personable with his disciples. In so much, look what he said right in verse 36. Matthew 13 and 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went unto the house and his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And notice how the Lord starts revealing. He started breaking it down to him. Right. He answered and said to them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. He went on and made. He gave the, the disciples the details. Amen. But the multitude, that's why the big house, child, please. Watch out. They don't have the mysteries of the kingdom there. And so much, let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke uh, 6 and 20. Let the book tell us how the Lord feels about his disciples. Luke 6 and 20. Luke 6 and 20. Luke 6 and 20. And notice what Jesus did toward his disciples. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples. And said, notice what he called his disciples. Blessed be ye poor. So that is another characteristic of his disciples. Blessed be ye poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Is the spiritual aspect. We got a lesson on that. He gives them the kingdom of God. Amen. That's why he said, to you, it's the mysteries of the kingdom given. But to the multitude, it is not given. It is not given. But to his poor, his disciples, for yours is, that's a present, is the kingdom of God. Now let's go and look at another attribute of the disciples of the Lord by going to St. John 13 and 35, 33. St. John 13 and 33. St. John 13 and 33. Little children, because they've been born again. Yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, you cannot come. So now I say unto you, a new commandment. I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you and that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you have love one to another. If you have love one to another. That is a pearl of the disciples of the Lord. So now only, not only do we continue in this truth, you have love one toward another. Not only do you have the mysteries of the kingdom and the kingdom of God, the spiritual aspect, I talked about that last week, check that out. But you have his love one toward another. So if I have loved you, that ye also love one another by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you have love one to another. That's why when that young brother I spoke to Israel yesterday, hey, I just showed the brother love. Hey, Amen, you know. And then we saw this brother in our journeys. This brother's had fringes on. Hey, we say, like, what up, Israel? He walked up to me. He didn't judge me because I didn't have my So he executed love. Amen. That's, what it, that's how you know who a disciple of the Lord is. 
We showed the brother love. What up, Israel? He said, what up? Grace and peace. That's how the Lord knows who his disciples is, y'all. Moving right along, let's go now to uh, 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 Acts 11 and verse 26. Because his disciples got called this later on. Acts 11 and 26. Acts 11 chapter and verse 26. Acts 11 and verse 26. And when he had found him, to my Paul, he brought him to Antioch. And because they were seeking Barnabas to seek him, Paul. That's what verse 25 says. And it came to pass. That a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. And you know it's the Sabbath day they was doing that because Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day. And he changed not. So a whole year they assembled with the church and taught much people. And notice, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Mm. Wow. So they were disciplined, they were devoted to the word. They were witnesses of the word. And they were called Christians first in Antioch. So they were long, they were disciples way before they were Christians. Or that was the combination of their of the results of their continuing in the words of Christ. In the words of Christ, allowing that spirit to manifest, allowing that kingdom of God to manifest, to have that kingdom mindset. Now, in so much, they were called Christians first in Antioch. So now let's go to Acts 20 and 30 because Paul had to warn the church about these kind of disciples, y'all. Acts 20 and 30. Acts 20th chapter. I thought we started at 28. Acts 20th chapter and verse 28. It says, take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Yes, he did. God came down in the flesh and blood body and purchased his church. For I know, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. We're talking about among Sabbath day keepers, y'all. Mm. They're talking about them Sunday keepers. I'll, I'll tell the brother in a minute. There's nowhere in the history of the book of Acts, which covers the history of the church before 70 AD, did God decree Sunday. Which, or was there, ever, there was never a Sunday Christian there. So all of this is talking about Sabbath day keepers. For I know that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. Like ain't nobody born again now. Like ain't nobody said now. I had to deal with the brother and show him and what Peter told us. Look, wherever to baptism doth now save us. Not putting away the filth of the flesh, but having an answer of a good conscience towards God. So who gonna, you know, you got people around denying their baptism. I'm like, wow, that's a perverse thing, brother. And that brother, he saw that, but did I call him stupid and dumb? No, I said, praise God, brother. I showed him love. I said, hey, man, praise God that the Lord's opened your eyes to see that thing. He kind of came with that weak in faith thing, but I gave him words of encouragement. Be of good courage in the Lord. Be put on his armor. Put on his might. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Let him be your hope. Amen. Especially, Especially in times like this with the pandemic in the land, let the Lord be your hope. Don't be walking around trembling in faith. But he saw that at the baptism you are saved. According to 1 Peter, there's a couple other places, but those are some of the perverse things running around to draw disciples after them. Men won't be, won't be disciples, want disciples after them. Yes, you got brothers out here that want people that to be into them. 
Not the word of God. We must be disciples of Christ and continue in his word and we shall be his disciples indeed. And we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free from what? Men that want disciples. That's why Paul went on to say, therefore, verse 31, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. But look, let's go now to uh, who cannot be his disciples, y'all. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, 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 Matthew 10 and 32. Matthew 10 and 32. Matthew 10. In 32. This is who cannot be his disciples. Verse 32. Matthew 10 and 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. You can't confess Jesus, you can't be his disciples. Amen. But notice what it says. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came, I came not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. That's what happened with Israel as a nation. Our own is Acts, Acts, the book of Acts is actually about Israel that believed in Christ going up in their own house of Israel going up against those that didn't. Same thing Jesus just said here. But notice, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's what it comes down to. You got to be a disciple of the word. Yeah, give honor where honor is due. But never, never, never honor a man above the word of God. Amen. Always say what the book says. Say the book said or the scripture said. Not what some man said because then that means you loving that man above the word of God. You taking his word just because he read it. You eventually become his disciple. Instead of saying what the Lord said, you start falling off to what he said. Notice verse 38. He that taketh not his cross, and he ain't talking about take Jesus' cross. Everybody, we all got our own cross, y'all. And follow not after me, it's not worthy of me. Mm -hmm. Remember, it didn't say take Jesus' cross. That's when I see people walking around with that. With Jesus' cross, I'm like, no, nah, dude, you ain't you ain't got your cross. You got the Lord's cross. That's a, that's a difference, y'all. I'll read that again. He that taken not his cross. He didn't say my cross. He that taken not his cross. Because each one of us got something that we got to be crucified to, y'all. Mm. Okay? And follow after me is not worthy. He said, he that taken not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. Verse 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it, y'all. Shall find it. So now what I want to do is show you what happened with Paul, y'all. Let's go to uh, 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 Galatians 1 and 11. Because he became a disciple of the Lord after the Lord knocked him down. Galatians 1 and 11. Galatians 1 and 11. And this is what happened in the house, y'all. The house of Israel. And as the Lord was bringing the Gentiles in, you had the other part of Israel that did want the Gentiles in. Big fight, y'all. Big fight. That's why the Lord said, for the overspread of abominations, he shall make Jerusalem desolate. But that's another lesson. But right here, Paul explains his, uh, his born again, what happened with him. We're going to Acts 1 and verse 13. Galatians 1 and 13. 
It says, for you have heard of my conversation in times past. See, Paul was born again. That's why he said in times past. He had to change of mind, y'all. No, he said my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God. Didn't we read it was the disciples of the Lord? Because the disciples of the Lord is the church of God, y'all. Mm -hmm. And the church, and being the disciples of the Lord, he's the Lord of the Sabbath day. That's why I know ain't no disciples of the Lord in the church on the first day of the week, y'all. It simply ain't uh, 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 biblical. I put it like that. He said, I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. That's why he was in the Jews' religion. Notice, and profited the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation, as in saying, his own house. He was profiting many equals, he said, in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. That's how far away the Pharisees have fell away, y'all. Well, remember, they was yet religious. They always said, we be the seed of Abraham. But look, verse 15. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace. Can we get an amen? amen. Okay. Called by the grace of God. That's what it takes to come out of that. To be a disciple of Christ. Called by his grace. No, to reveal his son in me. That I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. See, Paul had, remember, early he had to go to the chief priest. But when he got his born again experience. He said, look, I, I didn't confer not with flesh and blood. I am left that lifestyle. That's over. Neither went I unto Jerusalem to them that were the apostles before me, but I went to Arabia. See, Paul had to completely separate himself because he knew the type of reputation he had. So he said, I went to Arabia and returned again unto, Mas to, uh, unto Damascus. Then after three years, that's why we have that in our lesson concerning the New Birth series. Three years he had to be away, y'all. He said, after three years, I went into Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But of the apostles, say, I saw, I sorry, I saw, sorry, say, hold on, let me make sure I got this right, y'all. But of the other apostles, saw I none, say James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria, Sicilia, it was unknown by the faces of the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, because all of them wasn't in Christ, y'all. But notice, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past. See, Paul had a born again experience, y'all. Now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. Paul had to change of mind. God knocked him off his high horse and he had a complete 180, y'all. And they glorified God in me. See, that's what happens when you get become a disciple of Christ. God is glorified in you. Not so mad. You don't run around talking about this brother is the, the, the great chief. You don't run around with that. No, you glorify God. God gets all the glory from the disciples of Christ. That is key component to being a disciple of Christ. So now, what we want to do now is go to uh, uh, Acts 9 and 15. Acts 9 and 15. And look at what he told Paul. Acts 9 chapter verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Goes our way, for he's uh, when he's talking to Ananias. Matter of fact, let me make sure I got good context, y'all. Good context. We'll start at uh, verse ten. And there was a certain disciple at this Damascus named Ananias, and to him said he in, said the Lord in a vision, because the Lord speaks to his disciples in visions too, y'all. 
Ananias. He said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in the vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to the saints at Jerusalem. Notice, now, remember, Paul was under the Pharisees. He went and got letters from the chief priests. Breathing slaughterers out against the disciples of the Lord and getting letters talking about if anybody be after the way of the disciples of the Lord, we should bind on them. So that's how they felt about what Paul was on. But notice, and here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. And you see Pharisees running around now, they got the Pharisees of the day, got a problem with the name of Jesus. Straight up. That's how you know who the Pharisees are. That ain't talking about no Sunday Christian, y'all. That's talking about the Pharisees of the day. Have a problem with the name of Jesus. But notice verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name sake. And Ananias went to his way and entered into the house and put his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And Paul, the rest is history, y'all. Okay? Paul went on to do great things with his epistles. Straight up. So now what I want to do now is go to, uh, uh, there were women disciples, y'all. Women, let's go to Acts 9 and 36 in the same chapter. Let's skip down in the same chapter. And uh, there were women disciples. Acts 9 chapter and verse 36. Now there were at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. See, women can't be disciples, y'all. Her name was Tabitha. By which so which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in the upper chamber. And then for verse 38, and for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent it to him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come unto them. Then Peter rose and went with them, and when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down. So he had to put them out the room, and he kneeled down and prayed. See, the Lord's disciples are some praying people, y'all. Straight up. Amen. Okay? And prayed and turned him, turning him to the body and said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when she had called the saints and the widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa. And many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass, he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a ten. So, yes, the disciples glorified the Lord. There's both men and women that were called disciples. Now, what I want to do is look at what the, disciples, what the Lord does with his disciples. Let's go to Matthew 26 and 18. Matthew 26 and 18. This is what the Lord does with his disciples. Twenty-six and verse eighteen. Actually, we'll start at seventeen. Now, on the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, which is the title actually of the Lord, 
the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, where would thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And notes, verse 18, he said, go into the city to such a man and say unto him, the master said, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Now to show you that this went on and on, let's go to 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. This is what the Lord does with his disciples. He keeps the Passover with them. And if you understand the order, we're going to read a little bit of it. The Passover is only at night. At evening. The Passover is over at sunrise, y'all. Can't do it in the daytime. You can only do it at night. All the disciples of the Lord know that. Matter of fact, before we go there, uh, I'm going to skip down and show you what he put on the table. My bad. Before we go to that first Corinthians. Let's skip down to verse 26. And that's saying Matthew 26. Back to Matthew 26. And this time we're going to do 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. This is unleavened bread. Okay? He took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. See, the Lord had put bread and wine on the table, y'all. That's why it says, To the law and the testimony, bind up the testimony and seal the law amongst my disciples. And here we see the Passover being performed with his disciples. So now I want to go. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. For the next day was the feast of unleavened bread. You can hold that all day long. Only the Passover could be held at night. That's the ordinance of the Passover. You go check it out. But 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Because Paul was a disciple of the Lord, and this is what he told the Gentiles, the Corinthians. And all the disciples of the Lord know this. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Purge therefore, sorry, purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump. As ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Keep the feast. Not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. That's why I never forget when I did a seminar. We did a seminar in uh, Kalamazoo. When I was head of the IOG Evangelist Council, I would drop the word Passover. And I would ask a question, what does the Passover mean to you? And believe you me, if I told you the details, it was amazing. Nobody, it was like, Oh, that's, that's, that's only, uh, that wasn't that something in Egypt? They, hardly any of them, matter of fact, none of them. And as the crowd swole up, we had one guy way in the back. He said, how long you been a Christian? 32 years. And what the Passover mean to you? And you imagine, people just sitting back like this in utter shock and awe. Because the disciples of Christ keep the Passover. They keep the feast. When the Lord said keep it. So let's go to Leviticus 23 and verse 4. Because you may have someone that want to be a disciple of the Lord started right now. Amen. Today. The real church doors are open to you. Straight up. Straight up. You can come in and be a disciple of the Lord. You ought to be a disciple of some man. Brother so and so. Pastor so and so, Reverend so and so. You want to be a, his disciple? You could be a disciple of Christ. Start now by taking His word, and this is when the Passover is held. Because Deuteronomy sixteen and one would tell you it's in a bit, but right here, Leviticus twenty three and verse four, because at the top stops with the Sabbath day, but at verse four, it says these are the feasts of the Lord. Remember, Paul said, let us keep the feast. So these are the feasts. And so I'll start out with 
But we just got to read them pretty much in the New Testament. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the month, first month, at even, is the Lord's Passover. Deuteronomy 16 and 1, write it down, we'll tell you that is eight bit. So at even is the Lord's Passover. That's what he was keeping with his disciples. That's what his disciples continues to do. And then they keep the feast on the 15th day. Verse 6. And on the 15th day, that ain't the 14th day, y'all. We don't went on. We on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days. He must eat unleavened bread. So now let's get down in the same chapter right quick. Because somebody might say, man, I didn't know that was the Lord. Yeah, now you're becoming his disciple. Verse 37. Notice. These are the feasts of the Lord which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to, be, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and a drink offering, everything upon his day, the Lord's day. So inside of this Leviticus 23rd chapter, the disciples of the Lord deal with the feast of the Lord. We deal with the feast of the Lord. And it is his day. So now, uh, here's what I want to do. I want to go to uh, St. John, the 17th chapter. Because the Lord, matter of fact, before we go, I'm going to show you some synonyms for this. Because in uh, the word disciple means convert. And I want to go to James. Let's go to James 15 and 19. Because the disciple of the Lord, we believe we're converting people. We believe in converting people to the word of the Lord. James 5 and 19. James was a disciple of the Lord. Peter, John, all of them. Going to the book of James. And we're going to read verse 19 through verse 20. Notice what it says. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and want to convert him, convert. Make a disciple of him. Notice. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save. That's what the disciples are about. Salvation, y'all. When? Now shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. And he ain't talking about the first death. Everybody got that coming, y'all. Up until the day that the Lord bust them the cloud, that sky, y'all, you don't know. And the ones that are so blessed when the Lord come, them the ones the Lord's going to change Johnny on the spot. But like it just said, shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Let's go to Psalms 19 chapter. And verse 3. Psalms 19. Sorry, in verse 7. Psalms 19 and 7. Psalms 19 chapter. And verse 7. Notice what it says. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. And notice, the testimony of the Lord. See, the law and the testimony. Gotta have both. It's pure. Making wise the simple. This is what the disciples of the Lord bring. That's why he said, bind up the testimony and seal the law amongst my disciples. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoice in the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean. All these are the attributes that are in, found in the disciples of the Lord. 
The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous together. This is what a disciple of Christ, a disciple of the word brings. The judgments of the Lord. That's what's what? True and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold. Yeah. Than much fine gold. Sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them, there is great reward. This is a disciple of Christ. That's what his mind is on. That's what his mind is on, y'all. Now, I want to show you about the apostles right quick, because the apostles were disciples first, and then this is when they first became apostles, really. Right here in uh, 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 Acts, the first chapter. Acts 1 and 1. Acts, first chapter. Or Acts chapter 1. How you prefer to say it. This is when the word apostle. Showed up. Acts chapter 1 and 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began to both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Now, hold that spot and let's go to Matthew 28 and 16 and look at what he called them now. Matthew 28 and 16. Matthew's 28th chapter and verse 16. Because this is after his death and resurrection. He appeared unto his disciples. Now at this time it was 11. So we're going to uh, Matthew's 28 and verse 16. The, then the 11 disciples went away to Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Notice, and when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now this is after the Lord had did the wave offering, which is always on the first day of the week. During the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And notice what he told his disciples. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, which we know is Jesus, and in the uh, of the Son, which is Jesus, and of the Holy Ghost, because the Lord told you the Father is going to send the Holy Ghost in my name. Who said that, y'all? Jesus. Notice, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. Even until the end of the world. This is what the Lord promised his disciples. This is the duty of the disciples, y'all. Now let's go back to Acts. First chapter. This time I want to pick it up. At verse uh, 15. Acts. 1 and verse 15. In those days. Peter. Stood up in the midst of the disciples. And said, notice, the number of names together were about 120. 120 people was there, y'all. So that's the number of the disciples there, but you only had the 12 apostles. And I want to skip down to verse 24 to establish that. I'm almost done. We're almost there, y'all. But we're going to skip down to verse 24. And this is the apostles praying. And they prayed and said, Thou Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, because they had sat before them uh, Barsabbas and Matthias. Okay, so they was trying to figure this out, because remember, we read earlier, it was 11 disciples. Okay, so they was missing one. But notice, verse 25, that he may partake of this ministry and the apostleship. See, this is the apostleship. 
Because it had, because they had been walking with the Lord for three and a half years and going all that they had gone through. The Lord was training them to bring them to this point where they would be called and accept the apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. Now hold this spot and let's go to Galatians 2 and 8. Galatians 2 and 8. Hold that spot. Because with this uh, the apostles cast lot, but the Lord, as we read early, he had actually chosen a uh, Paul to be that apostle. Because they had used an Old Testament uh, 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 method of selecting and casting lots, but the Lord was updating them, bringing them a time of reformation. He was upgrading them, boys. And right here, Galatians 2, I said Galatians 2 and 8. That's where we're going. Galatians 2. In verse 8. Watch this, y'all. For he, talking about the Lord, wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision. Notice, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. See, Paul had received the apostleship to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Peter had the apostleship to Israel. Okay, Israel that became known as the Church of God or the Body of Christ. Okay, so you have one apostleship that's to the circumcision, and Paul was to the Gentiles. So let's go back. Let's go back to Acts one and twenty six, and this is what they did right here. Now this lot they got from the Old Testament, casting lots they got from the Old Testament, because the church had to grow, y'all. And here this is what they did. Verse 26, Acts 1 and 26. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. But, as we've read earlier, the Lord actually chose Paul as that twelfth apostle, y'all. So now, I'm going to go to our uh, 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 last place. I'm going to my time. I'm going to go to our last place. Uh, St. John 17 and 6. For the Lord... Pray for his disciples. Because he knew they was going to go through it. That's why he said, Lord, I'm with you to the end of the world. But right here, St. John 17 and verse 6. St. John 17 and verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. He's talking about his disciples here, y'all. Thine they were. Thou gavest them me. And they had kept thy word, because we can read in other places where he spoke that which the Father had given him. God. So this is Jesus in his flesh before he went back up to heaven. He's speaking from the perspective of being in his flesh and blood body. And he's glorifying God here. That's why he said, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given them, thy, the, them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. That's why the problem with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were opposite of what Jesus just said right there. First, he's had a problem with Jesus, but the apostles whom he had chosen, his disciples, they didn't have a problem. They received him, and he said, they received them and received his words, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. Notice what he said about his disciples. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. That's why we are the disciples of Christ. And notice, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name. Wait a minute. So we, Jesus is the holy name of the Father? Yes. Keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, 
that they may be one as we are. That's why when Paul was persecuting the disciples of the Lord, he told Saul, 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 why persecutest thou me? Because that we may be one whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Verse 20. Verse 20. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. That's why he said, bind of the testimony of the seal of the law amongst my disciples. Isaiah 8 and 16. Now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world have hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. That's how I know it ain't a disciple in church on Sunday, y'all, of the Lord. And when you soon you get the word, and then you come out of the world into the word of God. Verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is what? Truth. This is what the disciples of Christ live by. Being the disciples of the word of God. I read that verse again. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Notice. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they may also be sanctified through the truth. The truth, y'all. This is what the disciples of Christ live by, preach by, love by, discipline to. The truth. Verse 19. Sorry, verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone. Notice. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's why he said go teach all nations. Those that believe on his word. The Lord bringing them in, y'all. On his word. In his word. That, verse 21. That they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me. And I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe. That thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me. I have given them. That they may be one. Even as we are one. Notice. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one. Maturing in one. Understanding in one. Coming to a conclusion together in one. That the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. So I hope you got some understanding today about the disciples of Christ. Those of you that are not disciples of Christ, but you disciples so many, you have, the opportunity, you have the opportunity to turn to his word and then share with others that want to be a disciple of Christ. That they can give them lives over to the word of God. Being born again by incorruptible seed, not corruptible seed, by the word of God which lives in the body forever. So this concludes our lesson today for the, of the disciples of Christ. A disciple of Christ, a disciple of the Word of God.